are listening to the 14th Source for all geeky and nerdy news and discussion, which means that you're listening to a podcast for all intents and purposes. I am D. Bethel. And I'm Andrew Asplund. And we are your two overeducated codependent nerd hosts, bringing you the things that we like to talk about, but filtered through inquisitive and critical lenses. In the episode for Friday, May 5th, or May the 6th, 2023. It, we're, it's May? It's May. Somehow. Mm. How did that happen? It's, it's May. It's May. It's May. There's it's, nothing there more we to go. Say. It's I don't know what else to say aside from the fact it's May. We got movies coming out. It's you know I know you know actually I think like Guardians of the Galaxy is actually the one of the few Marvel movies that you kind of have any sort of interest in or maybe I'm no I think projecting. you got it backwards actually I didn't like the first oh. one. Um, but you like the second one? Yeah. No, no I'm sorry. One. The yeah. first one was okay. The second one I thought was a big step up. Yeah. I would like to, to throw this against your wall. I think of the Marvel franchises, you're the biggest fan of Captain America? Like that movie franchise? That movie oeuvre? That's probably that's probably fair. That's probably fair. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll give you that. Mostly built on the back of Winter Soldier. Uh, well, no. Actually, I will tell you. I, I think I've talked about this. Like When, when a friend of mine... Who uh, a fellow I played Dungeons and Dragons with, who was had been in the army that I met playing D and D, but he was an army, an Afghanistan veteran. He actually took me to see it, uh, and I actually always thought which one, Cap- uh, the when- first one, okay, uh, the first Avenger. First Avenger. Yeah. I always Great thought movie. that Captain America was like a stupid idea, like, w- like yeah, oh, for sure, dumb patriot, whatever, blah blah. Uh, I just you know because that was my only exposure was just seeing like tropes and whatever. Uh, and I walked out right, of that movie. The Superman of the Marvel Universe. It's like, wow, this guy is way outdated and has no use for modern right. times. Right? And yeah. uh, and I'll tell you, like, I walked out of that movie like, holy shit, man. Not only did I really enjoy the film, I was like, man, Captain America is a, is a character that I suddenly have a lot of interest in. Mm. Yeah. And so that's for me, like, that definitely helped. I, You know, I'll say, hey, Civil War was... Was whatever Civil War was. It was that a, is it was a that's a great that's the great unnamed Avengers movie, right? Right. Uh, yeah, the, to have ever been released. Yeah, um, I think the TV series you know, struggled a bit uh, for various reasons. I mean, being filming during a pandemic, like as it mm. started, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But just the it still does what I really like, which was you know kind of juxtapose uh, juxtapose the the idea of being this this symbol of of the United States. What it means, you know, that kind of stuff, which resonates with me. Uh, Speaking of Falcon the Winter Soldier, yeah, or Captain America and the Winter Soldier, depending on which episode you watch, right? Fair enough. I mean, going forward, indeed. So that's why I think, like, but I think overall is the concept I really. If when to consider the overall canon, it's, Ca- it's Captain America and Captain America. <laughs> that's a terrible title. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So there's that's that's my thing. So. That's why for me, uh, you know, the new Guardians of the Galaxy isn't something that's like on my radar. Uh, oh yeah, I haven't really. I don't. I think I saw one of the trailers. There's been at least one, right? It's not because I don't expect to go see it. Uh, the only thing I know is that there's a fella in it uh, who plays Adam Warlock, who was in the Netflix uh, Dark Mirror uh, uh, Candy Smasher. No. Uh, Black Mirror. Black what? Mirror. Black Mirror. <laughs> Whatever the choose your own adventure was movie, he, the game, yeah, uh, that I don't know, but yeah, Will Poulter, yeah, he was, he was, he was the, he was, he was the, I know because the, the actor got memed a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I'm a big, I think of the Marvel franchises, Guardians is probably the one I like the most, and I'm very excited for this third one. I even watched the uh, the holiday special they released on the Disney Plus. Oh shit, I forgot they did that. Well, too bad you can't watch it now. It's out of the hall. Actually, it's still there. You can go watch it. But man, that that would be the Disney thing to do. To be like, actually, it's shit. in the vault. It's I'm so sorry. In December, from what I understand, like have they started? I think I heard something about filming beginning on Captain America four, or there's something going on with Captain America yeah, yeah. four. Yeah, yeah. So it's, I think they're actually they may have started. I mean, they they're writing it. If nothing else, I'm excited for you. There you go. I'm excited for you. But speaking of exciting news, mm. we're gonna do a cruise. Of the news this week, and I we we were talking about this before the show, and I'm I am making the executive decision to call this episode the news cruise, if only because we already have a show image made for it. So welcome to May 2023 news 
cruise. Well, it's also, I think the, the, the news cruise is much more casual than the news blast. It's true. We don't have that many stories to go through. And we don't do the news blast posts on the website anymore when we pretend to be journalists. Uh, so we've got uh, a couple of news stories that are all kind of you know tangentially or maybe a little associated. Actually, let's start with the one that's not. The one okay. that just kind of stood out is, hey, did you know that Microsoft is trying to buy Activision Blizzard? And did you know that the European Union basically said no? Which is pretty ex- interesting because... All signs before this had been pointing to yes, right? Well, because in the United States, they've basically got no opposition, right? Basically, yeah, because like, wow, two two giant conglomerates, why not let them team up and corner a large percentage of the market? That's totally natural and fine. I mean, uh, I, and it's interesting. I have a there's a there's a uh, an article that I'll, I'll we can put a link to uh, by a, a fellow that I talk about all the time, Corey Doctorow, and mm, yeah, uh, you know, he called it. Uh, convicted monopolist prevented from reoffending, uh, and it's it's interesting because he actually he talks a little bit about kind of the history of it. And, and Corey Doctor, I will tell you repeatedly if you read his stuff that yeah, uh, you know, anti-monopoly stuff, antitrust has basically been broken in the United States for at least forty years, right? Uh, the during the, the Reagan administration, and, and right. you know, we've got uh, failed Supreme Court candidate uh, Robert Bork who basically kind of helped redefine what antitrust means, which um, antitrust means anything goes. Almost right. almost anything goes, right? Like, you got to work really hard to actually, you know, meet the requirements of, uh, to, to be the bad guy in an antitrust. Unofficial historical mascot of the show, Teddy Roosevelt, would be spinning in his grave. Right. <laughs> but uh, what's interesting about uh, the, the stories, first of all, yeah, I mean, I, it sounds like it's, it stopped it, right? Because I don't think mm-hmm. they can. Mm-hmm. They can't. I mean, I, I don't. I actually don't know international trust law or whatever. Like, but the idea is, I don't think they can merge, but not in the EU, right? Like, you can't be like, right. well, we merged in the US. I mean, I feel like they'd be like, well, then you can't do business in the EU, um, right? But what 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 I found interesting about the story is that uh, the way it works out is that. And again, I, we can reference the article. I'm not an expert on this. Is that that what's stopping it is the idea that Microsoft is trying to preemptively monopolize cloud gaming. Uh, well, cloud gaming isn't really right. a thing, right? At right. least it's not a thing that like we we recognize as an established industry. Which normally would be like, well, then you know, how can we monopol? How can we prevent you from monopolizing a thing that we don't even recognize? And the the interesting story about it is that. Uh, is that this this came with so the, the, the details are a bit weird. Like you, you basically have the, the, the organization in the EU that made the decision, but based essentially on the expertise of a group of experts formed in the UK. That in the UK they, they created this organization, the Digital Markets Unit, which his whole thing was like, hey, we're gonna be experts on this kind of thing so we can advise you. But then they gave there was no actual enforcement mechanism. It was like we funded the research team, but not the the enforcement team. Whereas they'll it, give you some sternly written memos. Whereas the EU, they've got the uh, the Competition and Markets Authority, which is like, hey, we're gonna do this thing. Except we don't really have a research team. We we have the legal authority, but no ability to like to understand what the hell we're doing. So this is basically a post Brexit uh, collaboration between the EU and the UK to stop Microsoft from basically owning an entire industry on their own, especially more importantly, an entire perspective in industry. With the argument right. being, hey, if they own the whole industry, like if they get in before it becomes a thing. Then they control it, and it's very difficult to wrest that control once the monopolist has it. So this decision is, in a sense, future-proofing against monopolizing right. a, a potential market. Yeah, right. Which you know what, like props for that. I guess. I guess. I'm not saying that the, the deal should go through, but like if they do monopolize the market, then that would probably raise a lot of red flags once it happens, and they'd probably be broken up at that point but i guess trying to stem that tide i guess is better than dealing with it afterwards right because i think the argument is once once they have monopolistic power they can control 
right? That they, they can influence the government such that it, they'll never be stopped, right? And and it's 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 a funny. <laughs> Who do you think they are? Disney, <laughs> right? It, well, and it's uh, right. And it's a funny thing because it's like, well, but does this industry matter? It's like, well, you could say that like cloud gaming doesn't matter, but like at the end of the day, yeah. Once you know you. It's it's not too many steps to go from controlling one industry, you know, or for dominating one industry to then dominating others. I mean, that's Microsoft's whole thing. Like again, previous offender, uh, previous <laughs> technically, like they're one of the few really notable uh, uh, convicted monopolists, right? Uh, they literally were found to have been monopolizing. Although we can discuss the validity of that monopoly. Uh, tr- that this was about pack. This was packaging uh, Internet Explorer oh, with Windows yeah. in a way. Yeah, uh, which is interesting because at the end of the day, that actually is, was probably not as meaningful as it was perceived to be because this is actually one of those situations where the forward thinking would have, would have, and I think what Microsoft was kind of thinking was, hey, uh, the web browser is not the thing that is the dominant right. power. It's the web. Every uh, Mac comes packaged with Safari at this point. Right. Every well, every product. every every Windows computer has Ed, Microsoft Edge. It was the idea that it was integrated and stuff. And anyway, that's mm-hmm. not important. Okay. Fair enough. So anyway, so that's there we go. That's kind of a big story. Is that Microsoft can't merge with, or at least that's what it looks like right now. They can't merge with Activision Blizzard, or at least not do so and continue to conduct business in the European Union. Right. Just another tear in in the fabric of the absolute disaster that this whole thing has been not in terms of necessarily the, 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 the thing going forward, just like it's such a big mer- merger it, it, and Activision is such a dumpster fire. <laughs> right. Right. And it's like, what is just one more thing, you know? And to th- in that sense, I think this, and I'm glad we're talking about it, but, but and, and not that we're, we're major movers in the, in the, you know, in the discourse, but like, it's good to keep attention on this because it is a big deal, but, it's so fraught with controversy and just drama that this seems small in comparison to, you know, sexual harassment problems, right? And all the other issues that Activision Blizzard has had to face and Microsoft doing that kind of stuff, Mm -hmm. uh, having to deal with all that kind of stuff in the wake of it. It's just been, you know, it's it's just a, a complicated mess and this isn't making anything clearer. Or easier to understand. But yeah, so that's that's uh, I guess the first stop on our news cruise. Mm. Uh, What's the next port, Andrew? Well, let's you know we're going to keep talking about game related content. And, Sounds good. And I think our next stop is more of a report, not really a discussion mm. or analysis. Is hey, noted game publisher Wizards of the Coast made the news in the last couple weeks. Uh, in a way that uh, <laughs> I don't think they would have made the news five, ten years ago. Are you utilizing future tech, un, you know, unprecedented use of technology and modern systems to prevent people sniping their business? Or no. did they go for very antiquated <laughs> They hired means the fucking of Pinkertons, man. <laughs> the Pinkertons, Andrew, you say. Uh yeah, the fucking bigger tits. So let's now to be clear. Uh, so here's the story, right? So Wizards of the Coast has you know uh, an infinity of magic sets and things coming out, and a magic YouTuber uh, basically uh, got a box of a set. Uh, let's just stop for a second. Like I'm sure people know what we're talking about, but it, outside of the context, it sounds like. You're speaking in riddles. Wizards of the Coast owns the the, the card game Magic. The oh gathering. yes, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you say a Magic YouTuber, a different a, a, a bunch of different images come to mind. Oh, that's right. No, no, no. Uh, uh, someone who YouTube's about Magic the Gathering. Okay. And uh, basically, he'd received a box or uh, multiple boxes. I'm not sure of uh, of an upcoming set, March of the Machines: The Aftermath. Uh, which actually still has not released yet. It, he got it, I think, it, the, near the end of April. It That's was, not the Transformers one, is it? No, no. It's it's scheduled to release mid-May. And so he got it. <laughs> Late in May? It's not clear, you know, how he got it. Uh, but I think he, he actually says that his the place he gets his cards just sold it to him, which I'll tell you, like, that can happen because this shit exists weeks before it comes out right breaking breaking street date is actually kind of a, a common issue among smaller like yeah. you know 
sellers, yeah. So um, either way, he says, hey, I got this. So he goes on the YouTube channel. I guess he starts busting them open and stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, Wizards of the Coast sends uh, a private investigating and security company uh, owned by Securitas, which is like their national thing. But the company they send is Pinkerton Security, uh, a dis- the descendant of the fucking Pinkertons, uh, to basically go to this guy's house on a Saturday morning and, uh, uh, for what, for what he says, uh, threaten him and his fam- his wife and demand that he give all the product back. Um, mm. and it's just, it's this wild story because the reason why I mentioned, I mean, it's, it's weird to be like so concerned about a, a release of a product, which by the way, I think most, I think all of the content of the set had been spoiled because they release, you know, pictures and shit online or secret pictures or whatever. But the big thing was, you know, to, 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 to send a company to go, uh, the security guys to go basically seize the product back. But of all right. the companies, the Pinkerton security company, which while historically have been known for a hundred years for being, you know, violent anti-union security that were hired by both the government and massive corporations, uh, but also because in the last five or ten years, people played Red Dead Redemption 2, right. where they're the villain of this, or at least a villain of the story. It, yeah, yeah. So that suddenly, like, the terrible things the Pinkertons did are in the nerdosphere. Like, we know about them. History is cyclical. Time is a flat circle. All this fun stuff, right? Right. And so it's just, it's this thing where, like, Wizards of the Coast, man, a company that... Uh, I'm not defending them, but man, these guys can't give themselves a break. Like, it's like every couple of months they're like, how can we make a fucking ass of ourselves? <laughs> right. Uh, and again, full disclosure, we know someone that works for WotC, but none of our information came from them yeah, and yeah. all that stuff. Uh, it's actually that, that, that embarrassing thing where you text something uh, to the group chat and you realize like, oh, maybe I shouldn't text this to this <laughs> <Awkward>. guy. <laughs> Don't want to make him have to explain. Yeah. But anyway, so that's it's it's a thing that like whatever the intent, whatever the the thing, the outcome has been that now everyone is basically saying, you know, like making jokes about sending the Pinkertons. Right. Is now like a thing in in in, you know, all of the adjacent nerd culture. Right. Well, that's an interesting thing, because I think the Pinkerton angle and maybe this is honestly why they sent this specific group is like. The Pinkerton, the, the Pinkerton angle outshines the actual like reason why they're sending the Pinkertons, right? Right. In, in a lot of ways, it's like, oh wow, look at this quaint idea. Instead of being like, why are they shaking down like influencers because they did what they, you know, because a, a small business sold them cars they shouldn't have sold so early. Like, it seems like an overreaction. And that should be the story, but instead it's like, the Pinkertons, bro, remember them? Red Dead Redemption, right? Right. <laughs> like, I'm surprised they didn't shoot someone, you know? Right, were they wearing <laughs> stovetop hats and, and bolo ties? <laughs> Armed with shotguns, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> to take back some magic cards so it, it's just it's one of these weird stories it likes and it's funny because now is is other discussions come up people are like well at least that company you know whatever company we're talking about at least they're not sending pinkertons to your home you know <laughs> right uh, and i hate to say this that that whole news story completely spoils what happens in long john volume six <laughs> where the pinkertons show up and fuck with long john Fuck with his card game. His card game. The, the Long John card game gets ruined by Pinkertons. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, I you know I, I well, a friend of mine did make the comment that it just feels like maybe someone at Watsy is desperately trying to short their their own stock, you know, because it's like, <laughs> hey, why don't we just keep having really kind of you know embarrassing public moments as we're trying to say we're a healthy company? All this is overshadowing the fact that. Magic has a new like expansion coming out, I guess. Or this was actually like a sub expansion, so it was basically oh, okay. an expansion to an expansion. I don't know the details. I Magic the Gathering has got a lot more complicated than when I worked in the business, so I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. Off topic is Hearthstone still a thing? I don't know. Uh, okay. I think everyone's playing Marvel something rather now. That's the, oh the, yeah, Marvel but Snap, also Marvel Magic, something like that. Yeah, yeah, but there's also Magic the Gathering Arena. Uh, mm. Which is is the popular digital version people are playing, and actually, I know a lot of people that play it say, "Yeah, it's actually a lot of fun." So there, there we go. A little bit more. And while we're in the field of tabletop games, it only really makes sense to 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 move along, move along 
to another the next stop on the cruise. Another next stop. The, you know, the mm. story here we have. Weather's nice. We've got uh, an announcement from Paizo Publishing, which is a Redmond-based uh, tabletop and gaming publisher, uh, often viewed as the number one competitor to Wizards of the Coast, but only by people that don't realize that they are, like, orders of magnitude different companies, right? <laughs> like, it's like the billion-dollar company versus the $10 million company. Like, guess who's winning that game? But anyway, uh, Paizo announced uh, for the Pathfinder 2nd uh, Edition role-playing game that they're doing a, a, a remaster, they're calling it, Um where they're basically going to re-release their core rule books with uh, with not only addendum but some changes. And the, the interesting thing that I think for me uh, is one of the things is this 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 kind of comes out of uh, some Wizards of the Coast news from January, which was the open game license debacle. Uh, basically, you know, Paizo said, "Hey, we're going to shift to our own orc license." And in doing so, we're going to shift away from D and D, and so that basically they're saying, "Hey, one of the things we're doing here is we're going out of our way to eliminate anything that is too D and D. You know, things that are like that is a D and D thing. So, like, you know, what? It's not part of our game anymore. Okay, right, right. So this includes, you know, um, they, they said like some of the iconic spell names are just going to change them. Like, oh my goodness, magic missile. You mean force dart, right? Uh, but also, uh, I think one of the more interesting things is they lean more into their own kind of world and setting is like stuff like, OK, you know, we're going to get rid of alignment in the game, uh, hmm. at least at least as it That's is presented. Yeah, um, you're going to have more of this focus on like ideals and, and basically uh, what do they call it? Anathema and, and edicts like you're the things you're committed to, and the things that you can't do because of your belief. Um but also, like, I think the one that's, that's kind of captured some 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 attention is they like, hey, well, look, the D&D dragons, which have been part of Pathfinder, are too iconically D&D. So we're basically going to build our own dragon cosmology. Indeed, it's the first D. Uh, no, yeah. second D. So, uh, yeah, it is the second D. It's Thank the you. second D, yes. Uh, uh, so yeah, so they're going to be doing uh, kind of changing the the not only the mechanics where they feel, but also more importantly some of the content. And uh, the reason why it's interesting, and it kind of, other than being inspired in part by what Wizards of the Coast did, is it really parallels what Wizards of the Coast is trying to do with D and D right now, right? They are also <laughs> right. doing a remaster, but um, but it's been a lot more of a uh, shit sandwich for for wizards, right? D and D one D and D, or at least I think it used to be called one D and D. Now they've gone back to just calling it D and D, even though it's going to be a new rule book with new stuff that they're doing currently actively play testing with new class options and stuff. Um, and while they're trying to continuously emphasize that no, no, we're not giving up on fifth edition. This is going to expand fifth edition. Uh, mm. uh, it that no one took them seriously to the point where. You know, other companies are basically making their own spin-offs of fifth edition to get away from Wizards of the Coast. Right. I've been hearing about um like Crit Roll is like really leaning into their own business of like creating their own I even think like game and like Yeah, they have stuff, several so. games they've actually already announced. Yeah. yeah. Um but it's 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 so it's an interesting thing while you know Pathfinder's gotten some people that are uncertain about it. They they opened with like, look, we're being very upfront. This isn't going to change the game that much. This is mostly, there's a few like errata, some whatever else, but also you can still, the old stuff is, is going to still be available and still work, you know, mm -hmm. still be part mm -hmm. of the, mm -hmm. whereas Wizards keep saying, yeah, your old 5e books will still be good, but they're definitely pushing the the envelope of the game more uh, towards what some people think is like a sixth edition or a five and a half edition. So... As as a person that has considered game development and mm -hmm. has made games, like how much of a headache does it seem? Which which seems like the the, the larger headache, either creating a, a system from scratch, or like evolving a, a system enough to distinguish it from another IP, yet also keeping previous installments or revisions relevant. Like it's, I guess I'm I'm, I'm baiting the question there, or at least pushing down the scale here a little bit. Well. I what I'll tell you is that, you know, when when Pathfinder 2nd Edition came out, uh, it was, I mean, 
the things that that were inspired by third edition Dungeons and Dragons, which is what they were based off of, right. uh, had actually were pretty few and far between. Uh, there's a fair argument that they could have just not even made that connection anymore, and they would have been clear in most fronts. Uh, because they no just they, the, their work. game had really evolved a lot in their own direction. Um, there is no D and D that is like Pathfinder Second Edition. Right? Okay. Uh, whereas you know, uh, whereas First Edition Pathfinder was a direct step, right? It was it was just Third and D and D three point five. So I think that's like for them, this is more an evolution of saying, hey, we already were moving away. And actually, one of the designers has had been commenting for for years, that like, ah, there are things that that we did that maybe I would do differently now. Like not big things, but like layout stuff, some sort mm-hmm. of you know, kind of little rule features and like, well, now he's doing that, right? They're doing that. They're, they're getting to move into things that like, yeah, you know what? The way this was written, wasn't the best. We're going to write it differently. So I think these are good things. Like we'll see where it goes. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, unfortunately, tabletop gaming communities can be, they can just be precious. You know, they yeah, can, they yeah. can just, some people are like, Oh, they're ruining the game. People are saying like, Oh, you know, do I have to throw away my old rule book? And they're like, no, no. And of course my favorite people say, well, no, Paizo's not going to send the Pinkertons to your home to take your old rule books. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, not yet. Right. Well, actually, I think they've, they've, They've kind of leaned into the fact that they don't want to hire the Pinkertons. Right. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, I'm, I, I'm pleased to announce this actually piece of breaking news. Look forward to the uh, Pathfinder movie coming out. Pathfinder Dishonor Amongst Rogues. Oof. Oof. Big oof. Uh, well, no, but you mentioned that. And speaking of, of uh, spinoff media, uh, kind of a related is we, we take a adjacent stop on our news cruise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Paizo also announced a partnership. They'd announced actually, I think a couple months ago, that they'd partnered with a new company to make Pathfinder video games. Oh, okay. And, oh, interesting. Uh, which they, you know, they'd previously done um, two games, uh, Kingmaker and Wrath of the Righteous, which were based off first edition Pathfinder, uh, done by Owl Bear or Owl Cat, sorry, Owl Cat Games. But um, all indications are that that Owlcat is moving into a different area, and mm. there's kind of some like they don't want to make a new game system since they spent so much time on the previous one. But but Paizo doesn't necessarily want to keep making first edition games because it's creating some brand tension. Uh, so they partnered with a new company, Bcom Studios, which okay. <clears throat> they're from uh, uh, Quebec. Okay, and they just announced their first game. They announced their first game, uh, basically Pathfinder Abomination Vaults, uh, which is based on a, 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 an adventure in Pathfinder. But the thing that was kind of a surprise is it is an action RPG. Really? Right. If, if you were to watch the video, you'd be like, wow, that looks like Diablo. Uh, uh-huh. Which okay, okay, <clears throat> that's, that makes there's sense. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Like it's a this adventure is about crawling through a ten level dungeon, killing monsters. So guess <laughs> right? what? That's got Diablo on the tin. You know, mm-hmm. um, of course, some people are upset because they wanted to see a, a recreation of the second edition rule set. Where this company's like, no, that's not what we're making. We're making an action RPG based in this world. Uh, so so yeah, that was kind of unexpected. And again, you know, a lot of some people are concerned. Uh, but don't worry, you know, once again, uh, Paizo will not send the Pinkertons to your home to seize your copies of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Had you played the Paizo video games with uh, Alcat? I played well, I played Kingmaker, which I talked about on the show previously. Uh, I, nev- I never played Wrath of the Righteous, which was the second game they did, mm. um, because uh, I never finished Kingmaker. Like, look, I'm going to be honest with you. They're all isometric like Baldur's Gate esque role playing games, and you know, I hate to say it, I don't like those kind of games. A little outdated for you. A little. Well, I mean, I know some people think they're the bees and knees. I just couldn't. Yeah. I just couldn't. I, I kept mm. getting to the point where I'm like, I'm tired of this. You know. <clears> hmm. <throat> Interesting. So, so, so does this Diablo esque interest you then more? I'll give it a try. I mean, I like the, I like, I, I kind of like the setting. I mean, I played, what's the Diablo game uh, I played? Uh, Torchlight. I mean, I love Torchlight. It's a lot of fun. You didn't see uh, the Diablo game in quotes there, but yeah. Oh. Uh, whereas, like, so I, I'll give this one a whirl. You know, I think, I think as a, it's not my favorite game, the type, like, I'm not an ARPG, like, a, I don't play all of them. I don't, I haven't played Diablo since I failed at Diablo 3, like, 10, 12 years ago. 
Actually, I fell asleep playing Diablo 3. That's always a tip. That well, maybe it's I also should... because you're old and you stayed up too late. <laughs> <But> <laughs> That's yeah. true. But uh, the joke is I, st- I fell asleep and I was still alive when I woke up three minutes later. <laughs> well, fair. I was apparently okay. on the easy That's difficulty. That's a good condemnation of the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, all you have to do is keep your, 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 your mouse button down while you're sleeping and you get through that dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of making things, I guess, easier than they should be, if you don't mind me pulling out of this port into another. Oh, please. Um, maybe something to kind of wrap up on as we kind of back away from nerddom in general and talk about just kind of the internet in general. I don't know if you've been paying attention to the Twitter dumpster fire. Well, it's okay. It's been a dumpster fire. Uh, The more specific dumpster fire in the back left corner of this dumpster uh, with their strain. Well, so they finally took down legacy blue check marks. Yes. Right. And that was something that he'd been kind of teasing. And then, of course, being Elon Musk, he decided to do it on 420 because he's a child. <laughs> but then fairly quickly instituted not only Twitter Blue or whatever, that's $8 a month certif- that, you know, certification. is It's not even certification. The $8 a month bill you have to pay to get your blue check mark, But also instituted a couple other check marks. That have their own interesting stories. Mm-hmm. I'm going to run through those quick and then come back to the to the blue check mark thing real quick uh, because it just speaks to I think if anything, what this is evidence of is the fact that Twitter is not making any money, which considering the amount the 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 price tag that that Elon Musk paid for this is really kind of coming home to roost. Which is okay. So there's a gray check mark or silver check mark that you can get. I think that's for like government ins- government accounts or government you know people that work for the government but the big thing is like are these gold check marks right which you have to pay to basically apply for and that payment is a thousand dollars and then you have to pay if you get approved you have to pay a thousand dollars a month to keep your gold check mark so i'm guessing these are basically the corporate accounts right is what they're aiming for there Hmm. and that's insane (laughs) For a check mark that means nothing, because it because the check mark itself means nothing anymore at this point, right? It has nothing to do with verification, um, as we saw pretty quickly with you know once they made it a, a, a four pay system, like you know fake accounts popped up all over the place and all that stuff. Right. Um, I think the more interesting thing, and I think the the story here is that apparently. Apparently, and I am just I'm just extrapolating off of the stories I read, is I feel like Elon Musk thought like, oh, once the the, the legacy check marks go down, the celebrities are gonna be very upset and be more than willing to jump on board to pay that eight dollars to get those check marks back. And apparently that didn't happen. Right. And he's like, "Uh oh, <laughs> my plan backfired because I think he's kind of an idiot." Well, I mean, um, I think it got worse because I think it was pretty quick for people to realize that actually, if you wanted a, an easy filter for your Twitter experience, yes. you block people with blue check marks. Block the blue hashtag. Block the blue. That yeah. that, that made a uh, and you know what? That's still a valid thing to do. But the, I think that the the, the scurrilous thing that actually almost got me to, to delete my Twitter account. And I should say, I mean, Andrew's already been doing this, but I like my Twitter account. I'm not even using anymore. I'm, it's, I'm keeping it just to keep that, you know, ownership of the handle uh, that I have. But like, this just seems too skeezy to, to be trustworthy. But like what he started doing, and this seems super illegal to me, although I'm not a lawyer, is that he paid for celebrities check marks. They're eight dollar a month or he started paying for um, people or, like Stephen King well, that's what or he said, right? Like, Neil Gaiman or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chadwick and, Boseman. Right. <laughs> yeah. Who, which speaks to the, the biggest problem is, is that this is not opt in for celebrities. I'm not saying that they deserve special treatment, but like this whole thing, the whole point of it is that it's basically opt in. I decide to pay my $8 or not. What this caused was a spate of, living celebrities to say i'm not paying for this i don't know what's happening and as a as just a regular user who who will never have that problem it's like okay like 
security and and autonomy mean, mean nothing on this platform anymore, right? right? Clearly, which got me really not freaked out, but like I'm like, okay, well then the the smart move seems to to be just to sever the cord completely. Mm. Um, but time and I guess a little bit of of conversation kind of calmed me from that. Again, just kind of holding onto the the handle that I that I have is enough maybe just to kind of keep it safe. But like people have been saying that that oh people you know as soon as Elon Musk bought Twitter and, and started going crazy at the beginning like oh it's, it's got months to live. I think this kind of action shows that I think even though it's it feels like it's calmed down or we've, it's just been normalized in the last couple months, it's still on a very big downward trajectory. And we're not, and the Twitter story isn't done yet. And I think it's still going to come to a very spectacular and and grandiose and melodramatic conclusion. Yeah, no, it is, it is weird. And I think the only thing that frustrates me is, you know, I think when this all started, what, six months ago, seven months ago, I thought like, hey, we're all just going to go somewhere else, you know, and, and I'm, that, yeah, I'm surprised happen. at the number. I mean, there are some people that are just like, I'm done with Twitter, right? Sure. But there, are, but there are people who actually, no, they keep going, right? Like they keep, and I get that like, it's tough to divorce yourself from that platform because that's where you build your audience. Um, it just, it, I guess... It's frustrating because there's a lot of like tabletop RPG people who yeah. are still just twittering. There's still some A plus discourse on there, right? Well, I don't know if it's A plus, but it's you know B plus A yeah. minus. Definitely, it's definitely less than it used to be. But uh, right, right. We're talking about we're talking about curved grades here. All right. But yeah, it's and that's the kind of thing where I I I guess I'm surprised. And maybe it's again, you know, if you're out there hustling trying to. To, to make the, the gig economy work for you. I guess you got to be out there uh, right. schlepping es- shit on Twitter. So Especially when maybe a big part of your income came from Twitter. Like right. that's, it's it's a matter of having to reconfigure your entire business plan, which is very difficult and scary. Mm-hmm. And, and especially as we've seen, like before I would say this happened, Twitter was seeming to stabilize, right? It's like, okay, no, it's not the big thing it was before, but okay, it's it's not as scary and unpredictable as it was. Well, no, it turns out it is, because guess what? The guy that owns it is still a maniac. Right. So um, huh. so be careful, everybody. Yeah, don't put anything important on Twitter is what it feels like. Then again, you know, who knows? There's still people doing Twitter. Yeah. Oh, well, I think we've we've made the full trip, Andrew. All righty. Pulling back into our home port. We're now, we've had too much to drink for too many days in a row, and we all have COVID now. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm, 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 that's what cruises are, right? They're just COVID factories, right? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. That's my understanding. I guess actually we should avoid that and just pull into the port now and, 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 and call it quits. Mm. But as always, because you've been here with me, it's been a pleasure. And we should take off these Hawaiian shirts now. Why? That's my wardrobe. So if you, dear listeners, have any thoughts about the topics we discussed this week, feel free to leave your thoughts as comments on the page for this episode at forallintents.net. You can also post your comments or engage in conversations with other listeners on our Facebook page. You can also find us on other social media, specifically the ones that Andrew and I frequent, which means you can find me on Instagram at dbethelcomics, and you can find Andrew on Mastodon at profounddark at dice.camp. While you're at our website at forallintents.net, you can also take a look at our YouTube page, which you can find by clicking on the link in the corner that says YouTube that, or you may already be there because we simulcast our show on the Mm. YouTubes. If you are there, please feel free to like and subscribe, or as the kids like to say, ring the bell. We use two tracks of music for our show. One is called Disco Medusi. The other is called District 4. Both written and performed by Connor Mc... (laughs) Nope. In my heart. Connor McLeod, but in this case, it happens to be Kevin McLeod of the Clan McLeod, immortal swordsman, graph paper enthusiast, and musician extraordinaire. You can find his music and more at incompetech.filmmusic.io, and that's all licensed under the Creative Commons 4.0 attribution license. If you like the show and like to help us out, the best way to do so would be to subscribe to the show using whichever podcasting service you happen to use. What would help us out even more, though, would be to leave some sort of review, whether a text review or or using their proprietary metric, it will spread the word to new potential listeners to the magic of algorithms. algorithms. I 
I actually have a little surprise for you, although you probably overheard this news, because we can't let an episode go by without discussing Star Trek. Mm. The release wasn't, like the date wasn't, had already been announced, but um, precious information had been released about a new Star Trek video game that's coming out, Andrew, called Star Trek Resurgence, released by a company called Dramatic Labs who is actually formed by a company formed by former Telltale uh, designers. Telltale having done like the Walking Dead mm-hmm. sort of narrative game series among many, many others. Uh, the Batman game was, I've talked about on the show before, very good. Their new game comes out on May 23rd and the big news that came out this week is that it stars Jonathan Frakes as William Riker. Mm. And I think they said the game takes place, I think, a year or nine, something like that. Hold on, let me... One year after Star Trek Nemesis. Mm. So, so he's captaining um, a different ship, obviously. Yes, the USS Titan. And uh, what this tells me is I have to watch Nemesis. (sighs) I've heard bad things. Well, it's a movie. It 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 has Tomothy Hardy. Yes, and, uh, yes, and Ron Perlman, I believe. Ron, Ronathan Perlman? Yeah, yeah. You dare say. I Wait, do. you're not thinking about Alien Resurrection, are you? Uh, <laughs> I might be. Okay. Well, either way, I'm kind of excited because apparently they brought Jonathan Frakes in, yeah, and he was, he was gangbusters, uh, and all on board for doing it. And Telltale, when they're at their best, made really fun, interesting, cool games. And I'm not saying this is, and I have no idea whether this is a game in exactly that vein, but like, with that pedigree, with that talent, and with that franchise, odds seem pretty good. So yeah, we'll, we'll see where it goes. So until Riker puts his foot up on your console, dear listeners, I'm D. Bethel. (laughs) And I'm Andrew Asplund. And for all intents and purposes, that was a podcast. Um, It's fun. I think you'll enjoy it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you have to to look at jellyfish panthers. What are they called? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that is not what they're called. Did you know that koalas aren't marsupials? I mean, fuck. I fucked up the joke. I fucked up the joke. Hey, Andrew. What? Did you know that koalas aren't bears? I just heard they're marsupials. No, you fucking idiot. They just don't have the koalifications. <laughs> mm. Mm, 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 mm. I mean, it's either mm-hmm. it could be a cruise, right? I mean, oh, a news Sunday drive. It's news booze. <laughs> news boosh. <laughs> kind of struggled a bit with finding sorry, its place. I can't do that for you. We weren't asking. I think the TV series. <laughs>